graphic designing and we will be meeting a unique and interesting graphic designer. Actually, she's unique not only in her design but also because she excelled in graphic designing at a young age where she won the Grand Chen competition in Munich as well as two Adobe Design Achievement Awards. I'm happy to have with me in the studio Ms. Reda Welly. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Rada, and I want you first of all to, talk, to tell us more about your career because definitely you achieved great success at a very young age and maybe still it is not that familiar to many people. So I started as a painter in high school. I'm always interested like in the portraits, uh, the human being. I'm always infatuated by the idea of humans and how they work. Uh, and so I entered the graphic design uh, department in the GUC. Uh, because design is about uh, uh, connecting a function or a message through the human and connecting to people. So this was really interesting for me. Um, and then I worked in advertising for a while. Then I won a scholarship to continue my postgraduate uh, degree in uh, Florence, in Italy. Um, and that's it, and now I'm here. <laughs> now, you did your MA in Italy. To what extent did living in Italy, and it's, uh, it's full of art and culture and colors as well, and it's known as the, the, the country of fashion as well. To what extent did it affect your art? It's amazing, of course. Every day you're, you're surrounded with the visual richness in every way, but actually I believe that Cairo is a, lo is a lot inspiring in also other ways, even the chaos of the streets, the city. Uh, the density of visual uh, 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 culture is also am uh, amazing and inspiring. So every place is inspiring in a different way. What about your projects and uh, what are you doing right now, especially that you have uh, another famous project that we need to talk about? I'm actually working as a freelancer. So uh, currently I'm, wor I'm working on a movie project, like creating the branding and the identity of the, the advertising campaign of the movie. and also some other projects in Dubai. Yes. Now, would you tell me more about the project that won you uh, the Grand Chen competition and how competitive was it? The project Is it was the Let's Play or something? Yeah, Let's Play. It's about uh, creating a new language system <coughs> to, uh, uh, for uh, educating Arabic, so uh, a new learning system for, um, for early learners, foreigners, even refugees and host communities where they need to have, like be familiar with the Arabic language. Uh, it was my uh, obsession of colors, shapes, and forms to create, uh, lay, build a whole uh, But how Arabic. do you do it exactly? I mean, for example, when someone will contact you to make uh, branding uh, or something like this, for example, as a, as a start for your project, how do you work? How, what kind of information you gather? How do you sit to, to, to put it as a whole? First, I start by research. I, I believe research is very important. So I research uh, how every other uh, uh, country or mm -hmm. designer in the world have tackled this problem. And I try to uh, come up with an original, relevant solution that is also on a global standard. So I start by research, then conceptualization, and then like brainstorming, then like um, creating the, the whole um, a visual solution. I mean, yeah, you're using um, humans, using with the colors, with the relation, uh, different aspects, right? Yeah, it, of course, it depends on the brief, so it depends on the deliverable. Yeah. Well, I, I've looked at uh, some of your works, and it's quite interesting. And each project is totally different than the other. And um, I, I found things, like some of them, quite interesting, like the edible food package and, yeah. and the insects. Yes. Insects, edible package. Now, I, I want to know, these are really, you can really eat these? It's actually, uh, it was like a brand in Asia and they, now the in insect protein industries are growing. So this brand was about packaging like for an insect, insect brand. And uh, for me, the challenge was to transform something disgusting into a beautiful packaging that will be appealing to buy. So that's why I chose like the hand illustrated paintings and like to give a sense of beauty for this brand. Right, just allow us to move on to a quick break and then we'll continue our conversation with Reda Wali, so stay tuned.
Welcome back and we're continuing our interview with uh, graphic designer Ms. Radaweli uh, and uh, as we were talking earlier, we were talking about your project uh, Edible Insects, uh, the packaging of them in a sense. And uh, from that I'd like also to move to another interesting thing because actually you move from light things like uh, packing food to, as you've mentioned, movies to even serious stuff like your project about uh, refugees. So would you talk to us more about that particular project which I found quite interesting when I looked at? The idea that, well, that people uh, uh, view refugees from a distant place, like everyone <coughs> is moving into their individualistic lives and they don't, really, uh, they don't really sympathize or they don't have an action. And the idea was to create those animated paintings that as soon as they see them, you perceive them as in painting, uh, like a painting and then they animate to uh, give you like a shock factor or a surprise that they are actually real. So the idea was to, uh, to really uh, hammer on this uh, uh, point of seeing them from a distance and then just they're not paintings, they're actual people who need your help and this was the whole concept. Yeah. So basically also you are working the idea of branding, right? <laughs> uh, yes. The, you mentioned packaging and I think Across the globe, this is one of the most important factors, actually, when it comes to marketing any, any product or anything, actually. So maybe still in Egypt, we need to work more on this, actually, that sometimes we can see some people they bring from abroad when it comes uh, to outsourcing for the packaging and the, the branding and something like this. So how do you see this career right now in Egypt and what do we need to improve it? Of course, we need a lot of uh, awareness regarding design, awareness, design knowledge. We need to acknowledge the importance and the impact of design in our daily lives. So we're surrounded by design from since we wake up in the morning until we sleep. We're surrounded by graphic design uh, communication, visual communication. And we actually, uh, ancient Egyptians were the first who invented the first forms of visual communication in the world. Especially needed to be comfortable for your eyes as well, because exactly. some people, when they exaggerate, for example, they will lose a lot. Yes, and we're surrounded with visual pollution because not everyone is a designer, because design is not only using a program, it's using the tools and the idea of creation, uh, like the, the program is only the medium and not the, what graphic design is. So, I've noticed also that um, your work, some of them, like some of the facial features, especially uh, the women, female facial features, used a lot of interesting colors and they were striking colors actually, like the reds and the greens and yes. very, very colorful. So talk to me more about your choice of colors and would it differ from one theme to another? Because I've noticed in most of the designs that they are quite intriguing and uh, interesting. Either the design is different or the colors are so striking. I think this is my design style since I was a kid. Like uh, all my shirts and even my clothes were, were all colored and, and like full of patterns and it was a mess. <laughs> but I think uh, it grew with me, this kind of, u the use of uh, a lot of colors and this kind of uh, palette uh, illustration style. So I really like to preserve this and I think it's part of my identity as a designer. So you are making for yourself your own brand. <coughs> yes. This is another important yes. part because sometimes we are always talking about having something new, something creative. So how did you manage to do something like this, for example? Because as you mentioned, you work on researching, you try to search for more ideas. But in the meantime, you are taking the experience, but still you are making your own. I think I try to transform everything in my life into a creative output, like even the hardships or like an, um, every single day I try to push myself further because it's very hard to keep this creative mindset. So I try to maximize my inspiration sources and that's how I keep on working. You're deeply interested in preserving Egypt's cultural heritage and you have two major projects. You have the calligraphy project and you have uh, the Egypt Timeline project, which is a long project. Yes. So would you talk to us about them, but also elaborate in terms of how did, did you come with the idea, the storyboard, the steps that you've done? We have a huge problem of not documenting and not preserving <coughs> our national treasures and this is such a pity because we have lots of talent, lots of uh, resources but we're not using them. So uh, I think as the, my role as a designer is to uh, preserve and to celebrate our culture, our heritage. So that's why I int intend in every project to tackle a different area. 
So for example, the project about preserving uh, the typefaces or the calligraphic styles of the old Egyptian movie posters is trying to document before it extincts. Uh, because the, as you know, the technology is becoming um, advanced day by day. And if we don't preserve those kinds of uh, uh, treasures, they are lost in, uh, in new formats and new mediums, as well as the, uh, the history of the uh, printing in Egypt. I was researching the history of printing in the world, and then I tried to compare to the Arab world. And actually, I discovered that in the Fatimid period and Mamluk period, there were evidence of printing like five centuries before Gutenberg, and this is really a, like a breakthrough. And all of this is just lost. I mean, yeah. But tell us more about your experience traveling to different countries, um, learning from different cultures. And actually, just as you mentioned, <coughs> on the other side, you can see that Egypt is rich, as you mentioned, when it comes to designs going back to the uh, pharaonic ages and just as you mentioned a lot of things actually that Egypt used to be number one in and I don't know maybe due to the challenges many things happened for example even the fashion it started here in Egypt yeah. even before now people of course are talking about Italy but it all started in Egypt yeah that's why it breaks my heart really and I really believe that we should uh, put and invest more awareness in like promoting this because it's such a pity, I mean... But you traveled a lot, right? Yes. So tell us more about your experience, about your feelings. I think the travel uh, um, really uh, exposed me to different worlds. I, I've been very keen to attend like workshops and conferences. Which is the, the, the most important one, I mean, the most important experience for you? Uh, I think the last uh, of Barcelona conference was the major design conference. I amazing because they, uh, they attracted designers from all <laughs> over the world, speaking about the global trends, and it was really inspiring. But like uh, my journey in each city, of course, inspires me as a designer, as a person. I really love traveling, and I think it's my source of daily inspiration. I mean, yeah. yes. Now, when you made the Project Cairo Circus, did you go to the circus? Did you talk to the people? What did you do? Tell us more about it and the choice of uh, the characters you've chosen for that project. I spent a whole month uh, interviewing, getting into their uh, behind the scenes rooms and like it was really interesting. I loved like the human interaction and uh, knowing real stories. And I really wanted to create a brand that represents them as people, as humans and as performers with with uh, a lot of history, like, because as you know, the circus business, they are inherited, like it's an inherited business. And, and it was really interesting to know that uh, it was once the third, thir won the third place on the world. And um, the pity is that uh, the visual communication doesn't represent anything. And I really wanted to celebrate their story because the circus is a representation of uh, not only a performing art, but like social and political <coughs> values too. So it was really interesting. So how do you see when there is something, for example, or what is um, a new project or something that you want to achieve, for example, and it did not work in, I mean, something that you want to do, for example, branding for something that you feel that you need to do it in Egypt, even if you are not asked I really want to create a city guidebook. We don't have a proper city guidebook for the city of Cairo or any other city. I would like to create a branding for my country, for each city. In, in, in what sense? I mean, because we have, but maybe it is not the one that you are dreaming of. No, it's not updated. It's not, uh, it doesn't talk to a global audience. It's, um, I mean, it's uh, obsolete. No. We need more, more investment in design projects. We need more branding for museums, for sightseeing places, for, uh, for educational systems, for ministries. We need a lot of design revolution in our city. It's, uh, everything is, uh, is I like obsolete. the idea of branding of museums, actually, because uh, we talked to many of the museum officials actually recently, and we were talking about this same point. No, we have a real problem. Like the, the visual language is obsolete. The, the tourists wouldn't be able to find a, a correct brand experience like the ones you find in Louvre or you find in any other museum worldwide. We have a lack of communicating uh, efficiently and promoting our, uh, our treasures, <coughs> I mean. Yeah. You were the first uh, 
Egyptian to be included in the Forbes list as uh, one of the top 30 graphic designers, not only in the Arab world, but even throughout Europe as well. How do you feel about that? And uh, would that incentive you to go further in your career? How do you feel that that would influence you later on? It's a, it's a huge pressure. <laughs> it's a huge pressure to keep working and to push myself further because uh, uh, I was a workaholic already. I don't have weekends. And yet this makes me feel I, I really have to work so much harder. And, and it's a pride for me and for my city. It's the first time an Egyptian wins this. And I'm definitely honored. Like, but how can we promote this in Egypt? I mean, how can we take benefit of this when it comes to the designs and uh, such ideas? And how can you help the new generation, for example, um, to join uh, certain communities, uh, to, to, uh, to give your experience to different uh, of the young generation, for example? How, how can we work on it? First, we need to acknowledge that graphic design can change our daily lives. As soon as we know that graphic design has an impact on, on our daily lives, then we start to invest and sponsor and to uh, give hand to young designers who really want to help our city, who have a million, uh, million great ideas but don't have the correct support or the correct fund or the correct place or to, to approach. So You didn't think about making your own um, entity or something like this? Of um, course, my dream is to, uh, like to, to bring some new fresh graduates to, to work with you, to make a t your own team, for example. I would love to actually. Uh, my dream is to like, open a studio in every continent of the world. And this is my utmost dream. Of course, I'll start with Cairo. <laughs> well, uh, I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Now, now you're a celebrity, of course, celebrity <laughs> graphic designer for this interview and we wish you all the best. We hope that you'll achieve more and more awards and that you'll be always a fine representative of Egypt. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now uh, we will be going to a quick break. Then we'll be back on Breakfast Show. So stay with us. The Triad of Thebes was composed since the 18th dynasty. It includes God Amun-Ra and God Smut as a wife to Amun and God Khonsu as a son. It's noticeable that the members of this triad were chosen carefully, for the wife Mut choice was meant in particular. Mut here doesn't exist for being just the wife of Amun. But while she plays the role of a wife, we find her name expresses motherhood. This double role of the wife and mother was the essential condition to accomplish the concept of Ka Mut Af or the bull of his mother, where the female deity plays the role of the wife and mother, while the male deity plays the role of the father and the husband and the son. Goddess Mut plays here the same role of Isa or Isis as a mother and wife of God Min. Mut was pictured as a lady wearing a long tied dress and wears a double crown and carries the title of Nepti Tawi, the lady of the two lands. Both the double crown and the title of the lady of the two lands symbolize the role of the wife and mother played by Goddess Mut. All this confirms that Mut was qualified to play the role of the wife and mother of the God of Fertility. It's concluded that God Amun-Ra has joined between two great divinities through the universal role related to him. They are the divinity of the sun and the royal mastership which he had acquired by his merge with God Ra and the divinity of fertility and the universal mastership which he acquired from God Min, which qualified him to master the universe. The practical expression of that was done by the festival processions in which God Amun went out in three main occasions, each of which was connected with the vital role of Amun in the universe. These occasions are 
the Feast of the Valley, the Obit, and the festival of the beginning of each ten days. During these festivals, Amun joins between